you went in like this. And I'm like in the background. Yeah. No. Photo bombing. Now you notice. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start. Yeah. I am Lance. And I'm Mike. And we're just these guys, you know. What's happening? Well, Mike, first you may have noticed or not noticed that the microphones are staggered here. Didn't even notice. See that offset? Well, yeah. It's because when we're on that camera, mm -hmm. you're what, 6'3", <laughs> you know, 250, linebacker material? Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. And so <laughs> when I'm looking at the, the video editing it, <laughs> you're this monster towering over me and i'm like oh my god so I, I backed you up a little bit to bring a little better perspective to the video here so that's why you're stuck over there in the corner well actually i've had people ask me just how tall you are and i said he's like five one <laughs> <laughs> it's not that i'm so tall it's, he's really super short Lance is no i get short. that it's just a weird angle from the camera but I did notice that. I liked it. See, I don't know why you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why you messed with it. I feel so big when I'm in here. <laughs> now, the audience, the, the viewing audience is going to know something already that you don't know. Okay. I've prepared a special coffee for you today. Oh. I filmed what I put in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so those who are watching this morning... They're sitting there with well, great good. anticipation to see your reaction. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to add the main ingredients together right here in front of you. Okay. And then I want you to taste it. Once again, Fear Factor. Fear Factor. Java. Maybe I'll hold it right up here. There we go. Now, take a moment Take a moment to enjoy the aroma. Let the ingredients meld. Let me prepare my coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Folgers. So, uh, what do you think? How's it taste? Dee 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 dee. La da 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 da. Remember that old Anticipation. song? Anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of waking up is Lance's coffee in your cup. Woo! He's taking a sip and he's contemplating, tasting. He's got a good look on his face, wide eyed. That's good. Is that good? Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there no coffee in that? Eh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, a lot of cinnamon, sugar. <laughs> it's a creamer. cappuccino. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. it has Karen's uh, uh, condensed milk mm -hmm. that you love so much. It has a little cinnamon. You've mentioned mm -hmm. loving that as well. It's half gone already. <laughs> and a scoop of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I knew <laughs> you don't like coffee. You the like sweeter milkshake. it gets, the better. There, yep. There's a little left in the, you the know, cup of preparation you're, there. You're absolutely right. I'm really not a coffee drinker. I'm a milkshake in a cup drinker, basically. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So just... Just good though. Just finally give it up. You're you're not a yeah. coffee drinker. No, I guess not. And just start making, you know, protein shakes every morning. So you're a health nut. See? See how that works? So when I yeah, when I go into I totally spun that into a positive. When I go into like quick trip, I will go straight to the cappuccino machine. <laughs> Here's exactly the blend. It's it's three quarters cappuccino, French vanilla cappuccino <laughs> and then i'll go over to the coffee because i want to make sure that i'm still maintaining some of my manhood right right and i'll put in like a nice colombian blend about a two second pour <laughs> <laughs> well, then i works. actually go over to the uh to the slushy coffee machine <laughs> and i put some cold iced coffee in it 
slushy it's a, and it's again a cappuccino <laughs> and put that in to cool it down so i don't burn my you know my this manly gets- tongue <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i end up with you're right i'm really not a coffee drinker i've always thought i was you heard it here first today guys mm-hmm. mike is coming to realize good, something though. about himself it's about gone oh my god and I've re-poured even. <laughs> You're chugging. <laughs> Grief. If you just hear Lance talking for about a five-minute session yeah. here, you'll know I'm no longer at the mic and that, I am. That's a sign of a good coffee. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. true. <laughs> Got anything to read yeah. in there? You, you carry on for a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I do have something to, to, to bring to the table that uh, if you don't want to talk during this part. Well, bring it. A uh, couple of people approached me this past week. You talked about people hitting you up randomly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It happened again. Oh, tell me. Do tell. It's like every week somebody will come up to me. This this was on Sunday at church. A couple that I had uh, introduced the book to several months ago. I mean, at least half a year ago, probably. Said they just are loving the podcast. Wow. And I don't know why... I, I don't know why it still is kind of like, really? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I should be like, great. I'm just, I'm glad you found it. Yeah. They just, they love it. And really, and he says to me, and dude, I'm gluten free. Oh, wow. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And he says, I feel great. Yeah. Telling you. I, it's amazing. And and people think you got to give up stuff. And of course, nope. in the world of positive thinking, it's not about what you don't got. It's what you do got. Yep. Don't. Can't eat. Can eat. But what have you lost? Right. Nothing but bad. Well, I mean, I go to Taco Bell. I get a bowl. Yep. Just leave the flour tortilla aside. They sell a bowl. Yeah. But and the you thing actually is, get more when you buy And you bowl. can eat corn shells all day long. Oh, yeah. Corn. So Fritos, Cheetos, gluten free. Oh heck yeah. And the thing is, once you do this and you get rid of the gluten in your diet and you feel so good, if you want to know just how good you actually do feel, <laughs> eat some gluten. <laughs> It'll quickly show you. Quickly. And it how, doesn't take a lot. No, it doesn't. It takes just a little bit and all of a sudden you get this crappy feeling. Your back starts to hurt. At least that's where it goes for me. That me too. Me too. So, congratulations. That's Jeremy. Jeremy. Gluten-free. America. America. Uh, one guy walked up and looked me in the eye, and, and that, that eye look where you don't know if he's about to pull out a gun or, <laughs> you know, that, that wild <laughs> eye look. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen it before. A couple times. Yeah. Uh, he looked me in the eye for a long second and said, this is revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, it's so simple. Yet said, I'm getting an understanding of and being aware of my thoughts. Mm, yeah. He was telling me, I never knew you could think about what you were thinking and then actually change it. Yeah. And, you know, and to him, revolutionary. You bet. And then uh, a lady... Uh, who riddled with anxiety, gone through a lot of this stuff on the podcast and everything. And she came out the other side and said, you know, there was an incident that occurred that six months ago would have caused a lot of drama amongst herself and her friends. Mm -hmm. And she said, it went so smoothly, I didn't recognize it. Hmm. And she said, when it hit me, how well I handled that moment, I said, Wow, I win. Yeah. <laughs> and she smiled and she said, she said, Wow, I win. Why doesn't everyone learn to think this way? Yeah. And this is not new advice. No. Take every thought captive. Take, where do we where did we hear that? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's like revolutionary. Take every thought captive. And yeah, what? it's been right here in front of us the whole time. Whatever. In all situations, whatever is lovely or positive, Mm -hmm. think on these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like I I took a class in college, I remember once, um, that 
was just absolutely useless. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but I decided I'm going to be in this class. So I'm going to walk out of here with uh, the command of this part of the book. Now, the rest of the book, what the professor had to teach about, all the extra assignments and stuff, I could care two cents worth. But since I'm here, I'm going to walk away with this. And the crazy thing is, is if I didn't have to take that class, I, I would not have signed up for it. But I can tell you right now that I use the material I gathered in that class every single day, every day every day and it was because i found something in the book i found something in the material that i wanted to know about i could learn about i, I chose that uh, i wouldn't have taken the class but i'm like okay if i'm gonna take this class i want to learn about this yeah and so every time you have any questions out there yes sir i have one right here <laughs> and i would take him back to that topic yeah and i'd read studied that part of the book uh, do the other stuff enough to pass the test, but I would go get additional books on that particular topic. And it, whatever you think about is what you're going to create. You bet. Heck yeah. Two paths we can take. You had two, you, there was a fork in the road right there for you. You could either take the, I can't believe I have to take this class and why, what a waste of time. That's one path. And again, the other path was, what do I want? Yeah. I want to learn so I want this to be a positive experience and and really the intentionality of that is what locked it into your to your memory because you were also able to ask questions specifically to what you were wanting sure. to learn. It's an amazing thing. And that translates to every aspect of our lives. It really does. And for the newbie, for the beginner, it it is just deceptively sinisterly subtle how quick we can go back to the old way oh it's actually something that i'm finding myself i'm having to learn to take every thought captive and it's i'm i'm doing that every day it's an active process it's an active daily from the morning from the get-go i'm telling you it's amazing how how much Tell me about what happened to your brain when the radio station said, hey, can you guys come and let me interview you? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd your brain go and how fast did it go there? Immediately. Yeah. Yeah, immediately it went. Okay, so what's the catch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this all about? Yeah. It's, man. It's quick. Yeah, you're right. But I had come full circle just to, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the no, back no, no. and break I, my own I, arm. But I brought it up because I saw you do that. Yeah, as you, uh, I'm sure, we're, we're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to talk this guy off the cliff. <laughs> I had come full circle back around to the positive aspect of the opportunity before the phone call was placed. Sure. Lance said, hey, well, I'll call you here in, in just a little bit. And so I was, you know, just kind of processing through it. And it, I would have stayed firmly planted in the, what the heck is this all about? But it's an opportunity that uh, we're going to have to go on to a local radio station and do a morning show uh, session. Sure. And it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. We'll bring them our brand. Uh, yeah. Brand of uh, just these guys. Just these guys. Yeah, but I immediately, as soon as Lance uh, shared the opportunity that was there, I immediately went to, okay, well, what's what's their agenda all about? What are these guys all about? What are they going to, what do they want to argue about? What they trying to I'm learning. Up for? I'm a slow learner, but I'm learning. And it's, you know, get back up. How fast you get back up? Mm -hmm. you, know, you stay on the ground. How fast you get back up and that's the same thing and that's what i tell people is um as you learn to do this you know it, it may take you two or three days to be able to like catch the negative thinking the different skills we've talked about and bring it back and say oh, okay let me rethink that and that's why i say i give a homework assignment and i sit down at the end of the evening think back through your day pick one rewrite it mm -hmm. rethink it mm -hmm. and the goal is not to be perfect I shouldn't say should. The goal is to catch them more quickly. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people take two or three weeks. And then after a while, it takes them a week. 
and then after a while it takes a couple of days and all I saw happen for you was it took about five minutes sure for yeah. you to go the old route for a second yeah. catch it stop yourself rethink and then yeah. come back at it afresh so as that as those two start getting closer and closer together there's going to come a moment and you've seen some of them where it just flips where the knuckleheads are out in the street firing off fireworks and you're walking out there watering down the bonfire mm -hmm. in your pickup exactly yep there's no <laughs> no complaining no yep <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Get off Bob Dole's yard. They're, they're setting fireworks <laughs> off out there. Let me go hose down the pickup, honey. <laughs> yeah. But really the idea of, of becoming proficient in taking negatives and turning them into positives is really, a, it's a part of the whole experience. And it, so recognizing that you were, you know, headed into the negative and then turning it into a positive is that it's really a blessing. Yeah. And, and so I don't know that I would necessarily want to just be, you know, pie in the sky. Everything's positive all the time without a, a recognition of, of that, it, how it could be if I was thinking the old way, I think it, I want to hold on to that. Well, this is the thing is it's not rainbows and unicorns, right? But, it, it's the freedom that comes with the new way of things. So like for me, for example, there, I have a couple of pet peeves that I still work on and people point them out to me <laughs> when they see them <laughs> traffic, mm. hmm. you know, drive 40 in the fast lane. Sure. <laughs> yeah. See if I don't start squeezing the steering wheel. But when I'm thinking, you know, they should get in the right hand lane. They shouldn't be in the left hand lane. They should speed up, you know, whatever. I'm getting frustrated and angry. Now on, at the times when, I'm not thinking that away when at the times when I'm just like, you know, I want to get home. I want to, Oh, let's see what's going on at the movie theater day. I'm driving along and I get to enjoy the drive. And so I experience the moment that's available to me when I think in this new way of thinking the life comes alive. Look, there's a new restaurant in town over there because I'm not tailgating the guy in front of me honking my horn <laughs> get out of my way you're, yeah you're taking 10 seconds off my drive home <laughs> so it there's a freedom that comes that we experience now there is an appreciation factor that you know in the past this drive would have been miserable for me <laughs> i'm so glad to be able to drive comfortably mm -hmm. but still it's it's for the for the listener who's stuck on that word positive it's not about happy happy joy joy it's about solutions it's about enjoying the moment it's about being able to relax and think about important things which we will talk about today here's our Wonderful. show prep a thought came up scribbled it down major major show prep you asked me to remind you of something this morning, mm -hmm. and I am now reminding you. Well, so my life consists of a constantly running segment of what I call, she's so damn right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a combination of she's so uh, smart and she's so right. So this is but, like a sitcom. Yes, yes, it is. But <laughs> she's, she's so segment. damn right. And I'm talking about Dawn. Now, that's a positive statement, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> well, we had gotten a summons uh -oh. uh -huh, on our door uh -oh. to show up in court. Uh-oh. And so when you first open a summons sure. that has been delivered to your door, sure. Uh, it's, it's a little unnerving, even though I've never actually been sued for anything. <laughs> it's still unnerving when you see the word summons yeah. at the top. And so I looked down just a little ways to figure out, well, who's up against me? <laughs> who's suing me? I see the name. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the name, but okay. it's the guy that we bought the house from back in 2004. What? Yeah. Well, it was it's something to do with a small town out in eastern Kansas. And so, anyway, so this guy that, that we bought the house from has apparently got an issue going on out there. So I thought, well, I'm going to call this 
attorney place sure. and let them know you you got the wrong address. Yeah. And by the way, this dude was like 93 back in 2004 when we got oh, the house Oh, so the from summons him. wasn't for you. Exactly. Ah, it was for We got nothing to else. do with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I'm trying to do the right thing and just let them know. This this is he don't even live here and if he's still alive by the way I want to know because I want to shake this dude's hand he's like 113. <laughs> so to to recap you open the envelope you have a panic attack somebody's yeah. suing us right and then you realize it's the not even you know, not okay. even us okay I follow now I <laughs> okay. follow now gotcha and so uh, I'm I'm trying to call this place they're not answering the phone their system is really confusing <laughs> and so. After about the third time, I was telling Don, I say, these folks, I'm just going to give up on this. They, they're they not even answering my phone calls. I don't know what the heck's going on here. I'm not even going to worry about sure. it. She goes, well, just let it go. And I was like, okay. Well, the next day we get a postcard in the mail reminding us about the summons. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, even though this doesn't have anything to do with us, I'm going to go ahead and give it one more try. I'm going to give him a call. In my mailbox. Well, Don says this to me. She says, why don't you just take the postcard and write on the postcard, not at this address, Whoa. return to sender, put it in the mailbox, Smart. quit worrying about trying to call them. And I was like, that makes no sense whatsoever. What good is that going to do? That's not <laughs> what they need. They need to know that I'm going to call them one more time. So I call them. I go out and I sit on our little porch swing out on the front porch. And I'm sitting there, and I finally get through to this lady. And as I'm talking to this lady on the phone, explaining how they're trying to find this dude who's like 113 years old, Dawn comes walking out of the house, and she's got this postcard in her hand, and she's strolling down to the mailbox. Sure. She puts this postcard in the mailbox with return to sender, not at this address on it, and she turns around. And at the exact oh, same no. time, this lady is saying no. to me, here's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> right on that postcard, return to sender, right on there, not at this address. That's exactly what we need. Send it back to us, and we're good to go. So it's exactly at the same time as she's saying that, Don turns around. And if you can picture Bo Derek, I know I'm aging myself, but yeah. come walking up out of the water, just <laughs> so beautiful. Now, it's this is minus the, the cornrows and the golden swimsuit. <laughs> okay. but. That's what I needed to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, she was not. What is Don wearing around the house and in the neighborhood? She, yep, she was just in her work attire, but she looked so smart <laughs> and so just, I'm just going to sexy smart is what it was. And she's walking towards me. And what I started laughing and this lady was like, what's, what's so funny? And I said, my wife is, she's just so damn smart. <laughs> she is so damn right every time. And I was just laughing, and then she started laughing. The lady on the phone started laughing. And, soon, and then Dawn finally gets up to where I'm sitting, and she goes, that's exactly what she told you, isn't it? <laughs> See, it's so damn right. Uh, it could literally be, a, if not a weekly, a daily episode in my life. Uh, she is so damn right. <laughs> so I just thought I would share that. I'm picturing those old 70s sitcoms. <laughs> yeah. Edith! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You want to know one more thing? Sure. Because I think this right here, this will save some marriages. We're going to say... Talk about your, what'd you call it last week with the filter thing? It was a professional or a pro tip. A you pro tip. It a pro tip. Yeah. Here's a pro tip. <laughs> this is a pro tip. I'm telling you right now, this will save some marriages. So pay attention. <laughs> if either of you at night tend to snore. Sure. A little or a lot. Sure. And it has any impact at all on the quality of sleep that either of you have, I've got your solution. And here it is right here. I'm gonna, for our viewing audience, you're going to be able to see this. For the, the folks that are that are not or are just listening, see that little thing right there? Sure. That is an anti-snore device. May I borrow yes, that, please? Yes, that you actually clip into your nose. So immediately, if you're like me, you're thinking... <laughs> Hey, no way I'm going to be able to sleep with something clipped into my nose. We can take it out of the 
The deal, you can let me do that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you don't put that whole honking piece of plastic in your nose. Here, I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to show. That's how important this is. This, this no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're going, what? How do you get that in the nostril? I'm going to go over to the camera real quick. Okay. See, it has a little hinge. I see that. Looking good. Just like that. That's it. And that right there, you won't snore. We both had these on last night. There were two different occasions where I had to check and see if she was still breathing. Well, you don't snore because... She was so quiet. You're awake with pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we like, slept. Ow. We slept so good. Can I borrow we that? We slept so good that we actually... Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is one of those things you might want to get your own. <laughs> but let me, we let slept, me try that on. <laughs> we slept so good that we had to put a noise machine on. I want to give it a test run before I spend my yeah. money. Really, the, that, the noise that we put on, it's ironic, it's snoring. Now, Don was just wearing <laughs> it to make you feel okay, right? Because she doesn't snore. She was. Well, yeah, just it was a sympathy You're right, uh, right. Deal. It was a sympathy yeah, no, deal. No, heck no. She doesn't snore <laughs> at all. <laughs> but here's where you can get it. Sure. Online. Online. Straight from China. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, matter of fact, I'm, I took a picture of the box. You can get like six of these for like 10 bucks. Why do you need six? I have, just in case you got five friends who snore. Uh, these are marriage saving devices. Fall into your mouth and you. Yeah. These are not just. These are marriage saving devices. Get rid devices. of snore. This is, I'm telling you right now, that's an amazing thing right there. So that's your value addedness for the show today. Well, I will that's be. Your pro tip. I will be ordering one because. Um, I don't believe it, but I've been told on occasion mm -hmm. I snore. Yeah. Well, and here's the craziest thing. I thought there's no way I could even get used to that. Well, there were several uh, instances where I actually had to feel it to see if it was actually still there. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say you walked out of the house. Yeah. Like a quick trip. <laughs> yeah. And people just thought, well. And you could. <laughs> he's trying yeah. he's trying to give it to young folks if you've ever been told that you have a deviated septum this is for you ah. this is this it's just straightens stuff out in there I, dude i honestly don't know exactly how it works but I, there was not one time where i heard her or she heard me and speaking for myself <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can, I can make some noise. So that's, yeah. If you want to save your marriage, we'll, get you a, we'll put, so I took a picture, we'll put it up and you'll know exactly what to look for. Anti snore device. It's a little nose clip that uh, works amazingly well. We'll be ordering that. And we might even put a link down below. There you go. <laughs> Make life nice and simple. Marriage saving device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clip. <laughs> That's what it is. And once again, she found this and was smart enough to order it up. And uh, I love it. She, love it. It's like I got to stop him snoring or strangle mm -hmm. him, one or the other. One or the other. Yeah, that's probably the Google search. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you keep from strangling your husband? Yeah, by him a snore clip. Oh, whew. yeah, I've got a lot of examples of things where she has just helped me to. She even helped me to just even stay alive this week. Really? Yeah. So I, everything that I do on the house. <laughs> is in steps and each step they're like baby steps <laughs> you don't even know where i'm going <laughs> I, I just, so you, <laughs> yeah you just know me mike with a tool belt so <laughs> one of the things I, I like to consider myself fairly handy sure and so i uh i have a couple of outlets that i wanted to switch out this week um and these are two outlets that i wanted to switch out three months ago lord help me yep well the first step is buy the outlets sure like 
A week later, the next step is remember you bought the outlets and actually get a, take them out of the car and put them in on the on the counter. And then the the next step is quit looking at them on the counter and like three weeks later, sure. decide I'm going to install these things. But I'm in a hurry. I got things to do and I I don't want to take because so much time. That decision to install the new electrical outlets always comes up when you're supposed to be at work. Yep. You're heading out the door. Yep. But you're finally tired of being told you should install those outlets. <laughs> and so I just decide, okay, I'm going to do this real quick. Don, well, real quick. Ease your frustration and simply say to Mike, Mike, I would like for you to get yes. those installed today. <laughs> you know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick doesn't include, you know, shutting the electricity off. And <clears throat> that's. I don't need to shut this off. Yep. I that's, can do this. That's the first bad choice <laughs> and so the very first wire that i snipped i was obviously <laughs> holding on to whatever was gonna ground me right into the the whole house and i had electricity shooting through me and that's 110 thank goodness it was 110 but I mean, it was zapping me pretty dang good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to do that again. And so finally, and sparks are flying. Like it was, there's a, there's a, on my uh, clippers, there's a actual, like a, a spark burnt spot on it. <laughs> <laughs> so they go flying and Don's watching this whole thing. <laughs> She's watching this whole thing. <laughs> she knows <laughs> how I can best learn lessons. Out. <laughs> yeah. Get it on the kitchen table. Yeah. And so the thing goes flying. Now, here's the good news. When something like that happens, it tends to trip the breaker. That's their design. That's the best news the, of the day. Then, somebody was thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah. So then I could finish... With the other three wires that I had to clip with the breaker flipped. <laughs> that was all part of the plan. Yeah. I don't want to go down in the basement to throw the breaker. I'm just going to grab here. Saved me a trip. <laughs> It'll throw itself. Mm -hmm. But the other good news is apparently my ticker is not in too bad a shape. <laughs> I just got some exercise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I got it installed, went down, flipped the breaker, oh. and the outlet works. <laughs> and the other one still needs to be installed because it's on a different breaker and I didn't want to go find it. <laughs> do, you, do you need to throw the breaker for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll pop once I cut this wire. <laughs> watch this. <laughs> so for you, honey, you know, out there. Hold my gluten-free beer and watch this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to teach you something. <laughs> That's not the recommended way to do that. I should have been filming it for a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was startling i laugh because i care yeah i've I never really liked dealing with electricity <laughs> i don't know why the heck i thought i was going to be so brave oh <laughs> yeah oh. Uh, laugh because i've been there so yeah <laughs> go down to the basement throw the breaker or just be real careful <laughs> i can just be real careful let's brave it yeah, yeah. not smart <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know how we segue into an actual topic for the show today so that people get some value added out of this other than... What are you talking about? We saved marriages. <laughs> <laughs> we saved lives. Yeah, we saved lives. <laughs> don't do what we do. We, we uh, shared a, a wonderful morning... I mean, what, what do you call it? It's not coffee. Morning breakfast drink a morning a morning drink so much value to this time <laughs> I, ice cream and cappuccino <laughs> perfect which it's gone and i don't have a caffeine high but i'm pretty sure this sugar high is kicking in pretty good <laughs> <laughs> hey how you doing i'm gonna change some outlets now <laughs> i'm be like a squirrel <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, what is it that you had in mind when we were going to start this? <laughs> well, what I was thinking about is um, what I was thinking about. As the week unfolds, mm -hmm. um, you listen to the news. A little bit. A little bit. See it on TV, see it in your 
podcast or your uh, your your Facebook feed. I don't know where people get their news these days. Mm-hmm. Read news, uh, hear it. And what struck me, because somebody was talking to me about uh, the mayoral race coming up and how the, the candidates are saying, we're going to make the city safe. We're going to get crime under control and, and we're going to make the water flow smoothly. Is that your Lily Woo voice? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, my Lily Woo voice. <clears throat> but he pointed out, he said, that's a given. I mean, that's your job. Right. That's what a, a mayor and a city council are. That's the. That's like saying, I'm going to go to college and get a D. Sure. You're not giving me anything to vote for. Sure. And that's kind of what got my brain to spinning as he was describing that, that we set our, our goals with other people as uh, the basement. You know, would you enter a marriage if your wife said, honey, I promise this entire marriage, I will never fool around on you. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's a given. If we're going to get married, that's like, yeah, exactly. You know, what you're supposed to do right literally a law that's your and as i started thinking about it the things we are attracted to in life we we root for success we we root for champions we root for people you know going above and beyond the expected and and we are so uh, and this is where we we live our life one way, but then we uh, intentionally or unintentionally don't live our life the same way in the areas where it matters. But think about football. What, I just was, yeah. What value, literally, what value does a sport bring to the family, the community, the country? None. There's absolutely no tangible value to watching a team play a game on the field but we love it and you know if if you've ever seen the 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 england with the soccer i mean they are bananas over it and they will work in the factory all day save up their money all week and then go to one of these games and just lose their mind we will buy thousands of dollars of Patrick Mahomes gear mm, yeah. and with the foam finger and we'll sit in our living room <laughs> <laughs> and, and scream at the TV, go team. And we root for them and we get excited for them because they're, they've put a hope in front of us that they're going to achieve something. And then we turn around and we have zero dreams in our lives. Mm-hmm. We have zero dreams in our lives. We, we approach our job with no motivation, no thought that we could be promoted, uh, no thought that we could move to a different company, move up the chain, no thought about you know getting extra education to become better at what we do, no thought about starting our own company. We, we approach our relationships the same way. You know, we get into the relationship and that's you know a man thing. Um, you know, it's about the conquest. We got the girl. Now that mm-hmm. we got the girl, we're done. Sure. And, you know, you knew this about me when you married me. You knew I played golf 17 times a week when you married me. We have no vision for how great things can be. Now, why this was clicking for me other than the misery we live our lives in, because most people can walk around and, and live a life where go to work, uh, look forward to Friday night, woohoo, mm-hmm. and Sunday football, woohoo, and they go back to work, and that's the American dream. But when you get another person involved, whether it's work or church or a relationship, and that's what you're communicating to them, why in the world would they be with you? Why in the world would they follow you? Sure. We follow people who have visions. We follow people who have dreams, a better future, a better tomorrow. You know, Reagan, um, 
love him or hate him, one, one of the things that I, I know about him, I, I saw an interview with a, a guy who worked with him for many, many, many years, but he had um, the speech. And from 1964 until his last day in office for, you know, what was that, 25, 30 years he was in politics? Yeah. He had the same speech. Mm-hmm. Tweaked it a little bit here and there, but it was a, a vision. The, the city, the shining city on the hill, the, the hope, the dream. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. I have a dream. And, and we've got a statue of the guy up now because he was such a powerful leader and, and spokesman. And, and he, he gave people hope and energized them. Yep. John F. Kennedy in, in the 60s with the, the world falling apart and us at the brink of nuclear war and Vietnam going on and, and hippies in the street and chaos and, and culture. Let's put a man on the moon. You know, we gravitate to people who can articulate a vision to us. But in order to articulate that vision to somebody else, that seed has to first sprout in our mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just thinking, how many times do we squelch our dreams? That, that seed pops up. Hey, you know, maybe I can learn to play guitar. And then 82 voices come at you. Yeah, but you're busy. Yeah, but you can't do this. Yeah, but you can't do that. And you tried 20 years ago, and it'll never happen now. And then we don't pursue it. And then what do we have to offer to somebody else? Yeah. We, as a human race, as, as people, we want vision. We want dream. And we look for it elsewhere, and we will, we will find anything. I see people bet on cockroaches in the Navy. Like, okay, I got a bigger cockroach. He's going to be faster than yours. You know, here's a quarter. <laughs> they just want to see success. And, and, um, but I don't know what happens when we turn that towards ourselves and our own lives, that that concept, that idea just disappears. Well, I think that, again, these are not new ideas. These are not new, you know, human issues. That when Solomon said that without vision, the people perish. There you go. That he knew exactly that we need what you're talking about. We need vision. We need goals. We need direction. That's why I, I so often will end up on a Sunday talking about, and with no plan, of talking about it, it'll come eventually around to if you are wondering who you are, if you're wondering where you're headed, if you're wondering why you're here, this is it. So the vision for, for me is that we live first and foremost because we are children of God, that we are co-heirs to the throne with Christ, and that is our purpose, to help others to find that direction. And so, yeah, it, it's a little, it's, on one hand, it's easier when you know what you can focus on for direction and for vision. and But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily make it any easier to walk it out. The intentionality of it, the, the understanding that first it does start right here. This It always goes right back to thinking about what you're thinking about. And as soon as you begin to make that switch from the negative thinking to the positive thinking, then you've gotten on the right track to be able to go after a vision and to be able to go after it knowing the why, which is because you realize there's a, there's a better way. Sure. There's a bigger way. And so, and all of that encompasses family, marriage, uh, work, all of it. And, and what it actually does for me is it gives all of that purpose. It gives all of that vision. It gives all of that direction. Well, in listening to you talk reminded me of a couple of uh, people who I've seen walk this out. And f for me, um, I, I can follow directions. Yep. You know, when, when I was in the Navy, I, I repaired uh, electronics and mechanical stuff, making you know, typewriters, uh, satellite gear, uh, all sorts of electronics. A uh, little secret. I don't understand electricity. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but I can follow directions. Sure. So uh, basic electronic theory, I'm not real good with. Mm -hmm. But if they say, turn the breaker off for you. 
I, I can do that. <laughs> Make, I can follow directions. Right. So when, when somebody says this is a key to success, you know, do things consistently. Okay, well then I'll do it consistently because that is how th those are the directions to follow. Mm -hmm. And that's why I developed the, the system that I did is you don't have to understand this stuff real deep. But every time you hear yourself say don't want can't stop and think about what you do want or can do. It's, it's a very simple set of instructions to follow. You, you don't have to understand it to be able to do it. But once you do it, you might then begin to understand it. Right. And so I was a few years ago, I was listening to a couple of different pastors on YouTube um, because they're cool to listen to. Mm -hmm. But Creflo Dollar was explaining how his whole world changers church and everything kind of began. And it was him and his wife. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And they went to the bank. Mm -hmm. Here's what we want. And the bank said, no. So they wrote their dream down of what they wanted to do. And they put it in a, in a, in a bag and they prayed over it every day and they, you know, take donation from here and there until they could buy this little plot of land. And they went out there <laughs> just having bought the land, nothing else. They went out there with shovels mm. and started digging mm -hmm. and we're going to build this church. And they had no money. They had no backing. They had no sponsorship. They had this dream. Yeah. And if you tune into Creflo's show and he's in that church, that's the church that he started to build with zero money. Mm -hmm. Wow. He, he, the, the worldly way is to go get the backers, get the funding, get the financing, get the architect, get all of that, and then go start digging the hole. Mm -hmm. He did it backwards. And then maybe you heard of this guy, Todd Michaels, Michael Todd, mm -hmm. Michael Todd, Todd Michael, out of Tulsa. Nope. I'm going to send you a video. Okay. Now, here's how I found him. Um, every morning, Tish and I would get up with our actual coffee, <laughs> wake up, listen to a little Bub Inspiration. Yeah. And then go about our day. Well, we ran out of a Bub Inspirations and we're kind of thumbing through the YouTube channel. And there's this dude, Michael Todd, and we're like, look at each other. And he goes, yeah. So we listened to it in the first 15 minutes of what we listened to, because it's about how long our coffee lasted. I was intrigued because he used an example of faith that I had used in the class two years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. Michael Todd's stealing my material. He's been watching your He's videos. Watching so it was, it was neat to see this, mm -hmm. to see him use that specific example that I had used. And so we turned off, went about our day, and the next day, you want to finish his sermon? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. In the next 15 minutes, we were up air punching the air mm -hmm. because of his dream. And I'm not going, to, not going to give you a spoiler alert. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I want you to see the last part of his, that sermon. Gotcha. He had a dream. Mm -hmm. And he had the faith. To pursue the dream when everyone told him he was nuts mm -hmm. when he was nuts he was nuts and banks turned him down and other people just shined him on oh yeah michael that's a great idea no it's yeah. not right but oh it's just so exciting i had goosebumps as the video kind of wrapped up i'm like oh. but what kind of dreams do you have and this is a rhetorical question but it's a question i want the audience members to ponder is what kind of dreams you have for your life hmm. what kind of dreams do you have what are the things you want to see happen and my encouragement to you is do it now don't wait for other things to line up to then pursue the dream begin pursuing it now. I don't care what it looks like, how impossible it looks now. Take that first step and begin pursuing that dream and then take this huge risk of sharing your dream with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to learn to play the guitar. I want 
to travel one day. I want a better job. I want allow that dream to be real, begin pursuing it and share those thoughts with other people Mm -hmm. and just see where it goes. Kind of like I want to do a podcast. Yes. And I kept that just as a thought. Yes. Nice and tucked away and protected in my non-committal uh, part of my brain. Yeah, I walk uh, in, hey, you, Mike, how you doing? And that thought <laughs> is in your brain, but you look at me and go, I'm good. Yep. <laughs> Got any uh, ideas of what we could do? No, not really. How about if we do a podcast? How long ago was this now? A couple of years. Yeah. You first said it a couple of mm-hmm. years ago, it was mm-hmm. right before the pandemic, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I mentioned it again, probably about four months ago. Mm-hmm. And here we are, 22 episodes in. And this is episode 24. 22 that have been released, you're right. Yes, 22 released. And yeah. Had it not been... Had you not allowed that dream to come forward... Right. Had you not allowed yourself to say it out loud... Mm -hmm. Nothing would have ever happened. Yeah. And you would have been in the later years... We were talking about Erickson psychology, Ericksonian psychology... Mm -hmm. Looking back on life with regret... You bet. I always wanted to do a podcast, but I never did it. Dang it. Right. My life is nothing. <laughs> and so the... <laughs> We're cutting that little clip out. <laughs> so just to to express for me personally the advantage of verbalizing that and and again, sharing it with somebody else that brings value to that's that's what's important it doesn't do you any good to share your vision with somebody who is a negative nanny or a negative you know and they're not going to help you to do anything with it don't throw pearls to swine right exactly but i shared it with you sure and you understood the the vision behind it and here's the deal selfishly i really really 100 percent uh see how it is improving my confidence in speaking it's even improved i feel that yeah it doesn't sound very humble to say this but it has improved my um, messages on sundays Uh, it's helping me to process thought and attempt any way to share it sure clearly and it's it's just giving me confidence and I re- so I really appreciate the listeners. Uh, I appreciate what you have done with this because, again, you, Lance does the lion's share of the work behind this thing and on this thing. And so I really greatly appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, that's the idea. Of if, you've, if you have a vision and you have an idea, verbalize it and then go for it. Yes. Do it now. Do it now. There's that moment after you come up with an idea, kind of like with, uh, I'm going to change the electrical outlets. <laughs> <laughs> so you take a week after the thought to yeah. swing by Lowe's. <laughs> and, and you probably didn't actually go to Lowe's to get the electrical outlets. You were probably in there for something else. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I was going to change those electrical outlets. Well, while I'm here, let me walk over to the electrical outlet aisle mm-hmm. and get the outlets, throw them in the back of the car. In the end, when after you got shocked, right? <laughs> Shocking experience. After you <laughs> creatively threw the breaker, yep. How long did it take you to actually change the outlet? Oh, like maybe not even five minutes. Right. So when you're sitting there on the couch, you know, you know how to change those outlets. Drive to Lowe's, pick them up, come back. Yep. Ten fifteen minutes. Yep. New outlets. Yep, do it now. Uh, or continue to watch golf. Yeah. That that next 15 minutes of golf is going to be life-changing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
It's kind of like our um, sliding glass door. I installed a, our sliding glass door. Has to be at least five years ago now. That the packaging said that it was reversible, mm-hmm. and so uh, I put it in. But turns out it's not reversible, and so it's just in upside down. <laughs> <laughs> It won't, it won't lock. <laughs> and every time it rains, the, the, the bottom track fills up with water <laughs> because the weep holes are at the top. <laughs> oh, I tell too much. <laughs> yeah, that's why you want a shop back. <laughs> it's, we have a shop back yeah, sitting shop right, back, right? right by the sliding glass door. <laughs> oh, it's sad, but it's true. Well, um, if you want, uh, I can uh, get your model a door, and I can go read the instructions. Yeah, and see if it actually <laughs> is reversible. What was the reversible element of this? <laughs> <laughs> what did they actually mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a great show today. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you hung around to this point. Yeah. Well, it is time to wind her down. Anything else you want to share with the audience, Mike? Or Well, so we're getting ready to have a commercial that's going to come out here after a while, right? Oh, yeah. You and the I one... recorded a commercial this morning. Yep. Uh, so it'll be out there on, will it be on Bean Pod or? Well, it'll first, uh, I believe, appear on Pod Bean. Okay. And then where it goes from there, I'm not certain. Okay. Um, but we can also take that commercial and make it into something for YouTube and Facebook and all those other gotcha. things. Something else to share that uh, be able to find more folks that can find some value in what we're doing. And uh, a final uh, example of the do it now mm-hmm. is what we were talking about at the earlier part of the show. Uh, as I drive home, or when I drive to work in the morning, I have it on AM radio because uh, I don't like the talk shows on FM, so I have them on AM, and there's this guy whose name escapes me right now, but on 1480 KQAM, Jeff. Jeff. I think it's Jeff. You want me to get it? No. <laughs> <laughs> 1480 KQAM, and when I drive to work every morning, they're interviewing uh, different local people because Jeff said I came to town and I knew to Wichita I didn't know what's going on what to do I wasn't really into the bar scene so I started looking around for stuff to do and I thought hey wouldn't that make a great show segment is things to do around Wichita mm-hmm. and he said see today's Tuesday so he, he said it on Wednesday and then he said it again on Thursday um, so if you have anything here's my email and the thought entered my mind, well, we're Wichita, and it's kind of something to do. It yeah. kind of fits in that box. So on a whim, Friday morning, I emailed him, hey, you know, we do this podcast if you wanted to you know, let the audience know. He emails me back, when can we get together to interview you about it? So that's when I emailed you. You emailed me back. We talked on the phone, agreed, I emailed Jeff, and before two or three hours went by, we got slotted for in-studio interviews on a a radio station. Do it now. Do it now. You have a dream. Don't let the 800 doubts and worries and whatever is coming to your mind just reach out and do it see what happens maybe you get shocked (laughs) or maybe you get an invite and we got an invite and so when you hear this podcast it will already have occurred Mm -hmm. but we will be appearing on the radio station to promote just these guys you know heck yeah awesome All right. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in. I am Lance. And I'm Mike. And we are just these guys, you know. We will catch you next week. Have an awesome week. Thank you.